During the October to February season, riders splattered through the trails of Flanders, pausing only to dismount and carry the bikes on their shoulders when the hills become too steep or the mud too heavy. Mud is part of the cyclocross experience, as much as wheels are part of the bike. Often seen as a way for road riders to keep fit in the off-season, cyclocross is a winter-only sport in which racers repeatedly wrap a compact, tight off-road circuit built around sharp turns, steep slopes, streams, falling trees, and man-made obstacles like barriers and stairs. Cyclocross routes are nearly as old as the bicycle itself, and there are many stories about its origins. One is that French and Belgian road racers in the early 1900s would race each other to the next town over from them, and that they were allowed to cut through farmer fields, over fences, or take any other shortcuts in order to make it to the next town first. A key early figure was a French soldier, a later secretary general of the French Cycling Union, Daniel Gouzeau, who would cycle through the forests alongside his horse-mounted general. Gouzeau enjoyed these outings so much that he invited a few of his friends along and before any other race occurred, in 1902 he organized the first French championship. So it's a really old sport, it's one of the oldest in cycling. Hello everyone and welcome to the Castelli podcast. I'm Søren Jensen and we got a cracking episode lined up for you today. I know I say this all the time, but this one is a very special episode coming up. So sit back, kick your feet up and enjoy this one. With the cross season soon coming to an end, one of the most important and prestigious races of the season, the World Championships will take place in Tabor in the Czech Republic this upcoming weekend. So I think it's time to get a little bit of education on the sport so we know what we are watching when we're sitting back watching the worlds on television this weekend. So I'm thrilled to introduce a young and highly talented athlete who excels in both cyclocross and road cycling, with one of her favorite couple classic races being the queen of them all, Paris-Roubaix. We'll do a deep dive on this iconic monument. So if you're not so much into cyclocross and its history, the do's and don'ts, Use the chapter links in the podcast notes to skip forward and learn more about how to ride cobbles and especially Roubaix. But now let's welcome Ilse Plumas from the Castelli Equipped AG Insurance Sudel team. Ilse, your history is amazing, I think. I mean, you're still very young of age. I know you come from a cycling family. Also, your brother is professional and I think also your grandfather. My grandfather was a pro cyclist. Then my parents met each other at the... So that, that I want in the podcast also yeah. later. Yeah, okay, okay. But also, I know that you are damn hardcore in cyclocross. Yeah, I like cyclocross. <laughs> but when I was younger, I did it like how, how I do now cycling, like really go full gas. But now it's more a bit beside and for the fun and just like... Uh, it's going great. It's going great because we've been giving you a lot of kudos and likes on, yeah. on social because I think this year you won, was that three races? Yeah, three out of four. Three out of four races. That's pretty good <laughs> in the statistics. Yeah, the first one I was uh, second, but that was because I made so many mistakes yeah. and a lot of mud. And, <laughs> oh, that was horrible. But <laughs> after that, it goes like... But how do you balance then cyclocross with your career on the road? Um, yeah, with my trainer, but it's now really like doing it for training so the races are more like training but yeah if you are on the start line you always want to win but it has to be aligned with your road yeah exactly so if i do a race then it's like i can do it but not too much because otherwise i have not you don't have to yeah you yeah, also get too tired also yeah for, exactly and for not your road training and a uh, lot endurance wise because in the winter it's to make some hours and yeah. if you do cycle course you have to take a rest day and a also before easy it's day. fully it's, on, you know, cyclocross. It's 15 minutes. Full yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is. Cyclocross is just for between brackets for fun. Even though we know that yeah. every time you pin a race number, it's race mode. You yeah. know, in the yeah, mindset. Yeah, 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 yeah. Before the race, I think okay, you'll see it's training, and it doesn't matter if you are second or third or fourth. But then if the start sign. Is there, then I'm like, no, no, I want to win. 
And then it's full focus. Full focus, and- yeah. So I would like to have you tell our listeners more about cycle cross and what it means to be a cycle cross cyclist and also what it takes, what skills you need, skill set and everything. Because also cycle cross today, I think it's different than it used to be. I mean, it's the oldest sport within cycling. And it's a sport that in the past, the big road cyclists, including Eddie Merckx, you know, were using cycle cross to keep themselves fit in wintertime, have fun, detach themselves also yeah. uh, from, from the world of road cycling. But now you have two type of riders for cyclocross. You have the fully professional cyclocross rider like Lars van der Haar from, uh, from the yeah. Netherlands. And then you have people like yourself who has a road career, but also keeping themselves fit and fun like back in the day, yeah. riding yeah. cyclocross in winter. Is it more difficult for you when you when you race up against some of these more yeah. professional? Yeah, like in our let at, with the women's, it's like you have uh, Femme van Empel yeah. and ah. she's full focus on cyclocross. And yeah, you can see in the races that she is just so many steps further than I am because she is doing everything for it. But also like the tire pressure or the which tire you are riding up is it Grifo or Rino yeah I'm riding at the course I'm like oh fuck. I don't know if I have to do Grifo or Rino and oh, she's no. like all the details she yeah. she knows and I'm like oh <laughs> I don't know I don't know so yeah she has so many steps in front yeah. of me for me yeah what I said it's for fun and it's like you have to get some skills of it and yeah. explore it Explosivity, how do explosivity, you say? Explosivity, yeah. Yeah, explosivity. And um, that's really good for your road career. Because then after every corner, etc. Also because you're more agile and, and more flexible also on the road because you got better technical skills. Yeah. And you yeah, feel exactly. more relaxed yes. when you're descending or when there's a crash or maybe riding the Strade Bianche, you know, or some of the coupled races. You know, yeah. it's... Uh, because you're more used to that yeah, using exactly. these skills. Let's just uh, take a step back. Um, what technical skills do you need to have to be a good cyclocross rider? But let's start first with the physical, so the body. You need to have a stronger core. core. Yeah. You need to be good For at sure. running. Yeah. Yeah, I do running sessions once a week, but I'm not a really good. You're not a good, you don't enjoy it that much. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Because some, but yeah. Sometimes you could also have a, a race course. I, what was it I saw? It was not, no, it was not Boom. It was Essen, a thing where it was so muddy. Uh, yeah. And the guys were basically running, like, I'm not saying 60% of the time. I mean, you had Wout yeah. van who kept, that was his first race coming back. I don't know if you watched it. But yeah, he rode a lot of it. But he also had to get up, the, get off the bike and run because it was just faster. Yeah, and then he has a little legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, if you have a run course, then I'm not there because I also want to do boom, the super position. But yeah, it was too much running because it was raining all the time. And then I said, no, I don't do boom. I do gold ride right, yes, because right. it was a bit faster course, yeah. and that's more for me because I'm a road. Cyclist. Talking about a uh, cycle cross course, I think there is a, a distance, a maximum yeah. or minimum distance it needs to have about three, three and a half kilometers long. Yeah, I think two and a half to three and a half. Three and a half kilometers, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have the that course, so we got the length. If you, as Ilse, you could design your all time favorite course, cycle cross course, how would it look like? Fast, fast corners. And straight, a long start, because now I'm starting in the back. So if it's a short start, then uh, you're fucked. But a long start and then dry, a hard uh, undergrund. Hard surface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not so much r- running, just, yeah, and fast corners. And then, like, that you have speed, enough speed. But yeah, that's also because I'm a road cyclist, so... Yeah. How more, how faster the course, how better it is. So, so again, very little running, no stairs, I assume. Okay, stairs. It's okay. Yeah. Okay, stairs. Okay, stairs. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's for fine. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Then you have to go up. That's that's okay. But uh, also no sand. No sand. True. Hate yeah. Hate yeah. sand. Oh, somehow <laughs> I will never do it. <laughs> never. No, no sand. But yeah, stairs is okay. 
because then you have a bit of uh, different uh, kind yeah. of stuff. But yeah, how fast? But riding sand, we know it's it's very technical. Yeah. Tell us about how do we ride sand? Is it about hitting it the sand with as much speed as possible and just let the bike steer itself? Or how is it? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And then look where you want to to go. go. Yeah, direction. Look in front of you and just let the bike hang their yeah. way. But yeah, I'm riding sand. I'm like panicking <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, I'm my handlebars. I hold them so, so tight. And you're losing a lot of energy. Yeah, then. and yeah. then I. Yeah. Yeah. No sand is not. <laughs> no sand for you. Because no. you have to let the bike find the way, but. Yeah, <laughs> but one thing is for sure, don't think about crashing before you hit the sand, because <laughs> then you're down on then the deck. Then you are crashed. <laughs> That's true. So, okay, we got your all-time favorite course here. How many barriers? We got the stairs, we got the all, you know, straight lines, we got a fast, yeah. hard-packed course. What about barriers? You like to jump barriers? No, but if they are high enough, then no one can jump them and then it's fine. For what me. is the right height for you? Uh, between 40 and 50. Yeah, 40. That's, that's still pretty high. Yeah. Yeah, it's high, but I think it's like that on the super prestige. Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, because then no one can jump off the room. Yeah, Puck Peters again. Yeah. <laughs> but but that's fine. <laughs> but not too too low that some girls can jump and some not. Yeah. Then Because uh, then I don't jump. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't take the risk. No. Because also, if you crash, you can hurt yourself, but also like they're in front of the home crowd or the fans yeah. looking at you. I mean, yeah. Yeah, and then I make mistakes and then it's it's even worse <laughs> so so let's tell our listeners how to jump how to bunny hop yeah is that easy to explain on a podcast we're not it's not a video thing we're not out in the field we cannot show them how it works but can you explain it okay. with words how to how i can learn to bunny hop for example no i'm not a good teacher in it <laughs> but <laughs> I, know you know. i think <laughs> you hold your handlebars bars like not at the shifters yeah here like yeah. on the top yeah yeah on yeah. the top yeah then you go out of your saddle and first your front wheel and then in the air you you take to tilt the bike yeah and then you first of all so you lift the bars with the front wheel yeah you push your body weight back to your front wheel and in the air you also lift your back yeah wheel. because in the air i think you tilt then your weight towards the front yeah, yeah towards and the then front. you get there yeah. uh, yeah. but first you need to wheelie Need yeah, to, then you have to go to yeah, the back of your yeah. body and then if you do your back wheel, you have to go to the front. But it's so difficult. It is difficult, Don't yeah. do it at home. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would, I would try, but I'll try it on the grass and to maybe just with a you know, wooden stick to jump yeah. first yeah. and then you know, we we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I, when I was younger, I wanted to try, but I only can jump with two wheels. But yeah, then you don't get that no, high. No, you don't. Or two yeah. times. Beca and after. plus also... If you jump, like you said, with just a normal, like a normal road cyclist would jump, you're using the cleats because you clicked in yeah. to lift the bike, but you lift the bike up vertical. It's not like pulling it first back and then forward no. and you cannot get as high as you're saying. No, you're right. Okay, so we got now your perfect ferret course yeah. for you, designed for you. So are there any race courses that are perfectly designed for you that you can remember? Uh, yeah, now this year I did... A lot of uh, races in the Netherlands. Yeah. And then last week I had Amersfoort. And that course was also fast corners and just some long straight parts. Part. Yeah. 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 And that was uh, a typical course for me. Oh, and some some little hills like the Expressive where you have to be at the power. That hills is, are also fine. In okay. Because otherwise it's maybe a bit boring. Yeah. Little, little hills, but... Not too much, not too much. Not too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if that's the... And then I think I also did Hilversum. There was one in the forest. Then that was also nice because then it's also dry and a bit technical between the... Between the trees? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that was also nice. a nice one. Nice. You like it then when it's technical, fast and yeah. fully on? Yeah, technical, on. fast. Yeah, and that's, yeah, and a bit of power and then... So now we get to the race. So we have the perfect race course now. Yeah. yeah. We get to the race. Who would you have us to give you, helping you with the support, with the spare wheels and, you know, you know giving you also in the pit with an extra bike? Now, now my boyfriend is standing in the, 
in the pit. He's and amazing, that's your boyfriend. Yeah, he is amazing. He is uh, also a mechanic. And now he is there with my yeah. dad. He decided the tire pressure as well for me because... Uh, then you pre-write the course. Yeah, and then you so, come back and tell him what tire pressure, you know, when is it low it or race? The yeah, so we come to the race and he makes my bike uh, ready for the reckon and then he asks me what tire pressure you want and then I said, yeah, you can choose. <laughs> and then um, I do the reckon and then he's coming to the, to the course to see and then sometimes I stop with him and then he put a bit more air or less. Yeah. And the tires, and then after that, like in Amers of in Amersfoort, it starts raining after the wreck. And yeah, and then I'm really thinking I have to ride on Rhinos because I'm too scared if it's slippery. slippery yeah, so you need something with more grip. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he said, no, we don't do Rhinos. We are riding Grifos yeah. because that's faster. And I was like, no, no, I want Rhinos because I hate it when I it's when, slippery. Yeah. And um. And I said, no, Grifo. So he decides the the tire, but he also listens to me. But most of the time I have to listen to him because he's right. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, he, is, he stands in the pit with my my dad. And I, if I swap bike with switch. Yeah, when you swap, uh, yeah. change bikes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Then I give my bike to my dad and he is... He cleans the bikes yeah. then, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. And then, but you also uh, have, if you feel like you need to change the tires, you know, or change the wheels, you want some yeah. a, a different a different wheel. Is, could that also happen during a race? Yeah, it's possible, but I I never. You never you never that, did no. it. No, no, no. But then I just scream. Yeah. And then, so you scream, and then you would on the next lap, then you would uh, yeah. they would have yeah, it ready for you. Yeah, half of a lap. But correct, you have the two. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, my mom is always at the start and finish line. Because going to a cross race, it's it's a completely different than a road it's a road race. race, and it's a whole oh. day event, a family event, as you're describing yeah. it. Yeah. Also, yeah, maybe that's why I like it. Because on the road races, you are only with your teams and with your team and not with your parents. My parents are there, but not with yeah. me. Yeah. And now it's really a day with my parents and then my boyfriend to yeah and it's just so much fun and all my friends are there and maybe that's also that's the, reason the social why aspect I, of I it, like yeah. it yeah 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 it's really nice and also now last year I did it with my family but now when my boyfriend is here as well it's like I also can see that he he's likes enjoying it. And enjoying it yeah, yeah. And yeah, then I'm enjoying it as well. I think that's cool. That's nice. Yeah, I always yeah, enjoyed nice. it uh, myself when I uh, was on on trips to Belgium and going. I always tried to go and watch one race on the weekend. Uh, and when you see yeah. in the morning from nine o'clock, you have to, you know, in some cases you have the kids, you know, getting ready and doing their racing. And at one o'clock you have the women's yeah. and then you yeah. have the men's at uh, three o'clock. Three, yeah. And uh, but even from the morning, you would have beers, fritz, waffles, yeah. Yeah. everything, you know. And it's one big party, especially and in uh, Belgium. Yeah. And in the Netherlands, is not that it's big, not that, no. no. Only maybe with a uh, World Cup, but not uh, so. How many races would you do then in Belgium during a season? Um, now I did Kortrijk, and I was supposed to do Boom and Solder as well. But I think I. And Lunout, but I think I only will do Lunout now. Because okay. if I do Solder and Lunout, then it's maybe a bit too much. And I need also some hours on the On the bike, bike yeah. Yeah, for the road races. So I have to decide with my trainer if I still do Solder or only Lunout. What is your trainer and also the team saying to you? You know, having with this great, all this passion for cyclocross... Yeah. But also being trying to keep you on a level that you can still, you know, pursue your yeah. your road training. Yeah, I think more my trainer. He is, yeah, I'm constantly in contact with him, yeah. and he makes also my program for the winter. What's the best races, and uh, also that it's not have a negative effect of the road se- road yeah. season. So he is, and he's also really supportive in in that, and he really likes it. And the team yeah, is, is also really supportive and I get a lot of material from yeah. them. So, But that's also a thing with cyclocross. Like we go with the camper, but the whole camper is 
fully packed with everything. <laughs> like all the wheels and two bikes and a roller and everything. Everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. So let's just let's describe before we get into the to the racing here, because we talked about the circuit, we talked about the recon. But then when you finish recon, then you need to get into the zone, get more focused in on the race. How much time before would you start eating your pasta or rice or whatever? What would you eat for a race meal? Uh, normally I'd start eating two hours before and then I do the rec- recon. And then I change clothes and they wash the bikes and stuff. And then I start um, riding on the rollers. Like it's 20 minutes warming up, but I think it's 45 minutes before the, the real start. start. Yeah. Because after that, you put your helmet on. And then it's race mode. Yeah, and then it's race mode. <laughs> so <laughs> so most- then we're rolling up to the starting grid. And we said it before, because you're not racing consistently, you know, cross, then unfortunately you have to start in the back. Yeah. But how is the feeling when, when you're starting there at the, you know, at the starting line? And it's a little bit like Formula One. Because you're just standing there yeah. waiting those 30 seconds when the lights from, from red and then will change to green. And yeah. you don't know exactly because you don't have the number countdown. You're just sitting, you're standing there and yeah. waiting. Yeah. It's about 30 seconds. What goes through your mind when you're standing there, the starting grid? Let's just in the back, it's more difficult because you're probably thinking yeah. about all the people you have to cross <laughs> or pass. But when you're at the front, how what 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 is what goes through your mind? Yeah, if you have a national race yeah. then i'm first of all i really think why i'm why i'm doing this because then you are so nervous that you think you're why? nervous and you know you got 50 minutes yeah. of pain yeah. in front of you <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so then i'm thinking that and then i also think oh i hope i have a good start because sometimes my start is so bad why yeah yeah i don't know how because normally i have the power but Sometimes it's also like a sprint, and sprint is not my best thing. But and sometimes I miss the start completely. But like in Kortrijk, where we had the lights, and I was totally in the back. I had a really good start, but then the girls in front of me like, were like so slow, and then I'm <laughs> stuck yeah. behind. So that's it's difficult. To yeah, move it's up, really difficult to move up. Yeah. One of the key aspects also, especially I think if you're at the front line is, and of course, every cyclocross athlete, cyclist, will know how to do a good start. Meaning also important is to clicking in yeah. right away. No problem clicking in, be able to have this explosive acceleration, at least yeah, to the first exactly. corner. That's yeah, hard. That's hard. Yeah. Because the clicking is, Mesa, is sometimes difficult. How do you train that? Yeah, we have training on Wednesday and then we are yeah, also doing starts. And then you do your pedal boot to click in directly. Yeah. And yeah, you practice it a, a lot, lot. Yeah, I can imagine. And then, you know, but yeah, sometimes you are missing it. Yeah. Or, so. But a lot of practice. A lot of practice. No, it is a very skilled sport, that's for yeah. sure. So uh, then we get into the race and you're in fully race mode and you got all these other athletes or cyclists in front of you you have to pass you pass through. I mean, there's a lot of things going through your mind, I'm sure. Yeah. And you're working your way up. What happens then if mid, mid-race, but you just pass that one of the two pits that you have a defect, have a flat tire? Have you ever experienced that you had to get off the bike and do the thing you don't like, run with the bike to get to the next pick? To, 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 to get a, uh, a spare bike or? No, no, not a lot. But in Kortrijk, I, I, swapped, off, I swapped my bike and then I clicked in, but I, yeah, I broke my pedal. So I oh, couldn't okay. click in for half of a lap. So then I was a bit, yeah, a bit stressed because I was making my way a bit more to the front, yeah. but then I couldn't click in. And then I saw my bike and yeah, they fixed it. But yeah, I didn't have to run. Yeah. I can't, I still could ride. Right, yeah. Yeah. But I never had a half lap of running. But if I had that, then I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> 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 then it's not nice anymore. <laughs> then I. No. Yeah. 
So lucky. Yeah. No, it's a beautiful sport. It's a beautiful yeah. winter sport. I, I definitely, I'm also a big cyclocross fan and I watch every race on yeah. the weekends on television, every Saturday and Sunday from Italy on my couch. I love it, you know, both yeah, the men's yeah, and the it's women's. Really nice. yeah. It's also nice if you have an endurance ride in the morning and then lay on the, on the couch, couch oh, and yeah. watch the cyclocross yeah. race. Perfect it's, Sunday. It's perfect Sunday, exactly. <laughs> yeah. For sure, if you have one, cycle cross idol if you have any who are you yeah. who are you looking yeah. up to yeah but then i think more about the men's like Mathieu van der Poel and Wout van Aert of yeah. course but now in the in the women's field it's like Lucinda or Puck or Pam who is doing it amazing They're doing amazing yeah and Puck has so much skills I want a bit of her skills <laughs> and then, then it's fine but yeah I think them they but are. they was fully, you know, fully professional, like... Yeah, they were... But I mean, that's the job at Cyclocross. Yeah, I mean, they is. don't have to mix or balance two sports like you. I mean, no. you you decided to follow a path that is road cycling. And that's why you're yeah. also on this amazing team. Uh, but it's uh, it's good. You still... I feel that passion uh, for, this, for, for the cycle. Yeah, it's really fantastic. Nice. It's a good way of socializing with yeah, your family exactly. and your boyfriend and friends. Yeah. So, yeah, I know that's, that's great. So someone who is new to cyclocross or would like to get into cyclocross, no matter the age group, because it's easy, we know it's for kids when you just go on the bike and you go there and play. But what would your recommendation be to people who would like to get into cyclocross? I think, first of all, do a bit of practice and do some trainings like small cornering and that kind of stuff and then where would you usually do that if you don't have a cycle cross course near um, you um yeah on the fields on the yeah. yeah on the fields it's would you set up small yeah. cones or water bottles that you would have to corner or yeah, slam them yeah you can through? do yeah that will be nice and then just just ride your bike and then also if you have a playground for, with for the kids with a bit of sand yeah. just ride through the sand when I was younger, I also did this, and yeah, of course, I had also training on the on the course. But I think just have fun, just yeah, like what you said, take a bottle and set it on the ground and just cornering. Yeah. And then if you do a race, yeah, just have yeah. fun. Because if you don't have fun, then then it's too hard to it do, is. do this yeah. sport. And then I think with just like everything in life and especially cycling, uh, have patience. Yeah, exactly. Don't give up. Yeah. Because the technical still skills is learning the rope. It takes time. Yeah, no. It takes a lot yeah. of time. Yeah. So uh, I definitely need to practice my bunny hopping there uh, so I can see what... Uh, uh, I practice with you yeah. because <laughs> I also can <laughs> I have to practice a lot for that. But <laughs> well, you know what? Unfortunately, I will be flying back from Calpe here um, tomorrow. But, you know, yeah. I think on the next trip here, the next trip, maybe even to the Netherlands, next time I'll meet with you, maybe... We do bunny yeah, hop. We could do bunny hop okay. together. Okay, <laughs> deal. <laughs> nice. You <laughs> have to practice every day, I think. That's awesome. Also, just shouldering the bikes because I know there are two ways you, ways you can shoulder the bikes depending yeah. on yeah. the distance you have to carry the bike. And uh, there are one where you maybe you can explain it how there are two positions you can put your hand, you shoulder it on the handlebar. Yeah, you can do it on top or yeah, yeah, yeah under, under the, the under the frame, yeah. and then you grab yeah. the lower part yeah. of the handlebar, correct? And yeah. that you would usually I use know, for. I do that one. Okay. Normally, but I don't do the other one because I also do it in two steps, but that's wrong because you have to go off the bike and then the leg you grab your, how do you say the... The center tube? Yeah. Yeah. To lift the bike yeah. up. But I first grab the upper... Ah, the top tube. Yeah. And then... And then the, yeah, the, so I the do down it. tube. Okay. Yeah. That's an extra step. That's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I have to learn to grab it directly like this. And then and then you have also, when you shoulder the bike, the other one, when you get, you do the same, you lift the, you know, you lift the bike, but then you shoulder your hand around the headset, yeah, the, the front, yeah. exactly. You grab the, the, the top. Yeah, yeah, oh, you can yeah. also, maybe, the, yeah. but I don't think you see that, that, that often one anymore. No. I think more like yeah. the... The one on, yeah, yeah on under the frame, yeah. under the down tube, yeah. 
No, it's it's such a technical sport, and there's so many aspects it of it. it yeah. yeah, no, it's it's very it's very much interesting. You know what? Also in the podcast notes, apart from I will link in also your social handle so people can find you if they're not already following you, and then also if you have any good websites for cyclocross cycling tips or whatever i'm sure people can also google it but i'll add them into the podcast mm, notes i don't know but i think on youtube there are a lot of uh, of videos where you can watch yeah. go on youtube pick. yeah exactly and also yeah watch the race on tv yeah. because then you learn a lot and yeah i that's think that's, that's it. true then now we talk about sand we talked about hard packed surface we talked about muddy what about the, the World Cup in Val di Sole when they're riding in the snow on hard oh, snow. snow? Have you ever done that? Yeah, yeah, I have done it one time in yeah. the Dutch National Championships. But then I rode a really good race. Then I was with Puck and Shren and I almost beat oh, them. Really? Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I was really good in it, but that was the only time I did it. But if I can do the World Cup, yeah, that will be really nice. And then also like Puck... After that, snowboarding or skiing, because I like skiing as well. <laughs> <laughs> so also for it's that, a, I want to be there. Makes you a perfect holiday combination. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> perfect. Nice. No, that's nice. nice. Bringing but, all your toys with you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, you have that one or two times. Yeah. But it's also really difficult. I think it it's looks a difficult. bit like, like sand. Yeah. It, yeah, but I think it also depends how packed or fluffy the snow is. Yeah. Because yeah, sometimes exactly. it also gets icy, you know, yeah, under the fluffy snow. And if you don't, if you are really light, then it's also hard to ride yeah. Yeah. that course. Because then you slip everywhere. So we we talked about also some of the big guys and 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 ladies uh, within the world of cyclocross, but also some of them who have transitioned to road cycling later. Some of them being, you mentioned his name before, Matthew van der Poel, yeah. Bob van Aert, uh, Pete Cock, and, and so yeah. on. And they're dominating on the road. Yeah. And you rode the Roubaix twice. Yeah. You rode the Gent Wevelingen. Do you think your skills and toughness as a cyclocross rider helps you here, riding those couple and very difficult races? Yeah, I think so. Because you know what's, how it feels to die completely. And that's in the cycle because the man has to do an hour full gas. And yeah, you you have a step forward to the rest of the peloton because yeah. you know how you can go really deep. Like also on this, on this training camp, we had to do a test. And also my training said we had to do a seven minute of, yeah, around five to ten minutes. Yeah, full until you are completely yeah. die. And yeah. my training said also, yeah, you have a step or in front of the rest because you already know how it feels to go completely deep. deep. Yeah. And that's also in a race. You know how it feels when yeah. you go an hour completely. And you know you can do it. Your body can do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So, yes. yeah. yeah. No, that's right. So I think it's uh, it's good to do cyclocross next to Yeah, you. no, it is. And I think also Fem van Empel is riding more and more at the, at the road at the now. Road, yeah. Yeah, I think now she is doing a full cyclocross season, but I think also her cyclocross season is going. So how how much time do you think she rides during the week on her cross bike versus road bike? I think if she, I think also she is riding one or two times on the cyclocross. I think one time on the Wednesday. That's normally the day that everyone has a cyclocross training okay. because it's not too close to the weekend, and that training is really hard yeah. always. So I think she's also riding one time and maybe a day before the race to have the feeling Off on the, the bike. bike. Yeah. yeah, so I think one or two times, but not more because then it's also too hard. Because training on a cyclocross bike is not it's not easy. So then talking about road cycling again here, uh, we're talking about some of the big couple races. You rode the Tour de France uh, Femme last year? Yeah. And you rode the yeah. Giro Donne this year? Yeah, or oh, the Giro... Pff. A lot of uphill. Oh, I don't want to talk about yeah. it. It was a lot of uphill. It was not my... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that again. Oh, every day in the group. <laughs> that was just horrible. Yeah, I'm not a climber. And then every day was climbing. So no, that was, uh, wasn't fun. No. It was, it was... It was fun. And uh, yeah. yeah. And, and then 
Also, the, the more attention there is now, I think also for the Tour de France fam and hopefully also for the Giro Donne that will be in the future on the women's yeah. cycling. That's that's yeah. gonna that's gonna be that's gonna be good. Do you know if you'll be racing one of the Grand Tours uh, this year? I think, but I don't know which, which one, one yet. No, so the Vuelta, Giro, or Tour. Yeah. But so we have to discuss the race, race program oh, still. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know, but I hope the Tour because it starts in the Netherlands. Yeah, correct. And that's correct. really nice. And the first days are, yeah, flat. So that's that's perfect. perfect then, yeah. Then Ashley, yeah, helping in the in the mountains. mountains. Maybe yeah. you can then, you know, shine during the first couple of stages. Someone else from the team. No, I think if we go to the tour, it's completely oh, Ashley, Ashley. Yeah, protecting her and keeping her safe and out of trouble. Yeah, that will be yeah. nice. That will be fantastic. Especially start in your home country. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you then prefer one day races or grand tours? One day races and especially the classic. Which one is your favorite? Yeah, Paris Roubaix <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but last year I uh, missed it because I broke my wrist in uh, Ronde van Drenthe. So I couldn't ride. But it was a big goal for me. Uh, three big goals like the this one and then the nationals and the European Championships. And then I missed my first goal. So I was I was echt so sad about it. But this year it's yeah it's a goal for me again. Because I really like that race. Just, just, just go and ride as fast as you can. And, and it's, it's beautiful yeah. with a long history. Which yeah, exactly. one of the couple sectors is your favorite? Cafu de l'Arbre. Oh, that one is hard, but it's so nice. It is very nice, yeah. yeah. And you're getting closer to the finish yeah, and it's, everything. From is... there on, it's it's full to yeah. the finish. Yeah, that one's so nice and long. So, any tips here to our listeners on how to ride in couples what is the thing you need to do you need to stay in the center of the road of course if it's possible yeah and don't have your handlebar handlebar too tight just have them loose also on the top or at the shifters and just look where you have to go and yeah keep pedaling as hard as you can keep pedaling yeah keep, exactly keep the chain tight yeah and sometimes it's the best in the middle yeah. to to ride because otherwise the car has uh, right in there. And then you usually so you the then stay just a few one centimeter or two yeah. above the saddle. I, I think, think you know. I yeah. think I do, yeah. but I don't know. But I think I'm riding a bit above the saddle. Yeah. yeah. Also because you don't have all this this bouncing. Also then. Oh, yeah. That hurts. <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh. Yeah. If you do the reckon of uh, Paris Roubaix, it's always a hell because then you think too much and then you have blisters yeah. and and everything and in the race it's just just go and then then there's adrenaline so but after in the wreck and it's it's horrible to ride couples do you go uh, with double wrap the bar tape and no gloves uh, or do you go normal no. and, and gloves yeah normal and gloves yeah and sometimes blister um tape on the palm yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so because i'm my hands are, I get really fast blisters. I think it's the same thing with most yeah, people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I normally I tape them yeah. and then gloves yeah. and normal handlebars. Yeah. And then you're ready there in your race suit and uh, yeah. all the race aerodynamic gears. Oh, can't wait for you, you know, to see you on television. Oh, yeah, I really like it. Yeah. It's so nice. So, but then also talking road cycling, did do you have any childhood cycling hero, somebody as a road cyclist? That you looked up to? Yeah, I don't. Mm, not not really, really, I think. But when I start cycling, I really liked Anna van van der Breggen. Yeah. She was she's really nice, and also Chantal Black. Her style on the bike, I I really like. Yeah. But it's not like I'm like whoa. No, then. So it must also been. I'm not saying it's easy to transition into professional cycling. Because sometimes people that can get maybe a little bit nervous about standing next to maybe one of the big stars yeah. and, and idols that I've had, you know, since since I grew up with cycling, but coming yeah. in with a more easier and clear mindset is maybe better most of the time. It's I think, better, yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. But sometimes if you ride in the peloton and then you think, oh, Lotte Kopecky yeah. or oh, Marianne yeah. Foss, but it's not that I'm really thinking no. like, whoa. But yeah, first of all, you look get them into the television and then you are riding next to them. Just so sometimes you 
think, oh, that's a bit crazy, but yeah. most of the time you just race and yeah, that's it. You know, you're in the race mode again yeah. and it's, yeah, it's exactly. uh, no matter yeah. if you're, you're riding in the... It's a nice mode, then you don't think about uh, just go. Yeah, exactly. And then also with Roubaix, then coming into the velodrome, that must have been like goosebumps, uh, you know, when you rode in on that velodrome, at least that what you always hear from, from yeah. the riders yeah. and you hear the crowd, you know, cheering. Yeah, it's really nice. The first time I crashed like three times or four times, so it was not not my best uh, period, but the second time I was around uh, place 20, I also crashed, but yeah. later on in the race. And then... Yeah, all the crowds, you hear screaming and you have to do the one lap. But yeah, that's so nice. But I was so afraid because I hate riding on the velodrome and then on the, on the highest higher, part. Yeah, the upper part. I screamed to Jolien like, what do I have to do? Because I can't sprint in this. And then she said, yeah, just ride away. And then I just, before the velodrome was there, I attacked. And then it was there alone, so that was much better. But if I have to do a sprint once yeah. there, then I'm so scared <laughs> to do. <laughs> then I don't know how I, I will well, do that. Well, you shouldn't be. I mean, with, with your experience and you know yeah, how. Yeah, that's, and, that's true. And you know, on, on, on a track, as long as, you know, as long as you're going. Yeah, keep yeah, pedaling. Yeah, keep pedaling. There's, there's, yeah. No, there's no problem, especially with the Roubaix, because it's not very Yeah, it's steep. not really no, high. No. no. So that's, uh, that's awesome. But uh, before we wrap up the episode, I also like to, you know, congratulate you on the European Country Road Championship title. How did that come together? When yeah, I don't take know. Take us through the last, <laughs> the last part of the race. Yeah, it uh, it was my goal the whole season already, and the week before I was mentally I was really done. But then I was there and I had the time trial as well. But I was so focused on the road race, and first of all I was. Uh, helping for uh, Femme and Maike. So it wasn't not that I could win the race because I was the whole day in the front and um, closing gaps because on one moment Zoe attacks and Maike uh, wrote to her, but then she dropped and then we had to close the gap uh, with the Netherlands. Yeah. And then I was riding full gas in the front with the girls. So And then after that we said... Um, we keep uh, Fem in the peloton for the sprint. And we just keep on t- attacking because how harder the race, how bad it was for us. And then uh, I attacked myself. And yeah, two time, two minutes later, this group went. And then I saw that there was no one from the Netherlands. So I was thinking, fuck, yeah, I have to do it again. So I jumped to them. And then I saw that every uh, country was there. So... I just sat on and hopefully hope that we stay away. And then at the last week, I looked back and I saw that the peloton was so far away. And then my brother said before the race, you have to attack and you have to do an all or nothing. So on that moment, I was thinking, okay, then I have to do an all or nothing. And then I attacked and Anna Shackley joins me. And I was like, fuck, she's a climber and I'm not a climber. So she just went in front of me at the last one and a half K, I think, two Ks. And she kept on going and I sit in the reel just doing nothing. Because as the Netherlands, we said, we have to win. We're just riding for gold. So I sit in the reel and at the downhill, I throw my bottles away because I was thinking, oh, she's so light. I have to throw everything away. As light as possible. Uh, yeah, and then the last climb, yeah, I attacked again. In the last 200 meters, 250. Yeah, 200, I think. And then, uh, yeah. It must have been a fantastic feeling. Yeah, but I don't know what to feel on that moment because I didn't expect it. No. Long. But I was feeling really strong that day and so focused, but I didn't expect to win. And my whole family and... Yeah, boyfriends and friends and everything. everyone was there. Only my brother wasn't there. So he was well, really sad yeah. about it. He was probably following somewhere on a mobile yeah. phone. No, or he was... The uh, race. He had a race. And then after oh, the finish, uh, his old Swanny was coming to him. And he said uh, to him he that I once. won. And he was like, no, 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 that's not possible. <laughs> Show pro cycling stats. And then he saw and then yeah, he was so happy. Nice. So it was, that was, yeah, that was, that was beautiful. Really- 
I like yeah. that. I like that story. It's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, it was really you nice. Just imagine it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So everyone was there around me. Yeah. It was perfect. One thing we forgot at the beginning. Uh, that's my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 is that I never asked you how you got into cycling, so how it all started. I mean, we yeah. touched on it with cyclocross, but and your brother and yeah. Um, so I don't know if you want to take us through, take for tell our listeners uh, your story about where you're from, first of all, and how you got into cycling and cyclocross. Um, now, first, my granddad was a pro cyclist. He was really good. He was 10 times the Dutch champion. And then my mom and dad met each other at the races. And then, yeah, Rick starts riding his bike and I was still uh, doing gymnastic. And then I also want to join uh, on the bike. And then I start to have like first one hour gymnastic and then after that I had to go to the cycling training. And when I think I was nine years old or 10 and then I started cycling to do the so I stopped uh, gymnastics. Was that your brother who pushed you a little bit? No. Or was it just natural? Yeah, just natural. Yeah. Also, my parents didn't push us. Uh, like, still, they didn't don't push us. They only support us. And... Um, yeah, but it was just for fun, just with the friends. And I go to the races, just play for with my friends and not really to ride my bike. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I was uh, U17, it gets a bit more serious, but not really serious. But I trained a bit more. And then Natasha picked me up for the U19 team of them. And yeah, from then on, it gets a bit more serious. So I got my first trainer. And uh, in 2019, I was European chim- champion at the U19 category. And then I can join the uh, elite team. Yeah. So the But it was a continental team still. And then from yeah, last year, I'm, I'm in this team. So... From the very beginning till it's till now. It's nice, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's really nice. And now for two, three years, it's yeah, it's serious. Yeah. And then also as a world tour team. Yeah, now. yeah, that's that's so nice. No, it's a nice. Yeah. It's a really nice team that yeah, Natasha has created here. It feels like a family. Yeah, no, it does. Also, I can tell you also as a partner of the team, it feels like one big family. Yeah, well, every is. time we meet you guys and the team, uh, everyone is so open and welcoming. So yeah, yeah, thanks it's for really that. Nice. So yeah, thank so. you. <laughs> it's, a, it's been a pleasure. It was amazing to have you on the Castelli podcast and hear a bit about your story, but also telling your listeners more about Cyclocross, because also knowing that we have then, when this podcast will go live, we will have the World Championships in Tabor taking place, and with some of the tips and some of the things that you explained about Cyclocross, I'm sure they're gonna enjoy a lot more. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not a really good cyclocross, so. <laughs> I have to learn as well. <laughs> but I'm sure people that can maybe pick up on a few tricks watching the, the big guys uh, ride or do the uh, the bunny hopping and, and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Ilse, thank you so much. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you and um, I'll see you out there on the road. Yeah, thank you as well for the invite. It was nice to do. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.